Today, I'm going to talk about patient stratification, the Spanish perspective on clinical trial design and clinical practice. So we are living in a very exciting time because we are closer to have a disease modifying treatment for Alzheimer's disease patients and we are truly making Alzheimer's history. But this also means that we will need to select the right patients for the right therapy and how we will do that. So this is why we're talking about today patient stratification. And in this talk, I will explain you what is the definition, the available tools, and the implications for patients and their cares. And what does it mean to stratify patient? So patient stratification refer to the association or division of patients into subgroups for a specific therapy. And how we will do that? Well, we will do that with the diagnostic process. So when we see a patient in the clinic, we perform the clinical history and the exam, we do the differential diagnosis, and after that we reach a confirmed diagnosis. And with that, we can start an empirical medicine for the symptoms or the disease that we have diagnosed, or we can use a clinical biomarker to have more information about the patient and if this patient belongs to a subgroup, and then choose a target therapy for that specific subgroup. And why is it important to stratify patients? When? Well, we need to stratify patients because we need to increase the diagnostic and treatment efficacy. Also, this is important to identify diverse disease presentation and to have more accurate prognosis. Also, a stratification is important to decrease the number of uh, failures in clinical trials because if we have a bad stratified cohort in a clinical trial, it will be far more difficult to find a response in a subgroup that could be beneficiating for this treatment. So this could end up in having more clinical trials, more expensive with longer time and more failures. So here is an example of where I have done. I have um, analyzed the inclusion and exclusion criteria for a typical clinical uh, trial for Alzheimer's disease. And I have put in here what I think it will be important or not that important in order to select a patient for a disease modifying treatment. So I think it will be important also, uh, of course, to have um, uh, to analyze the medical history, the current medication, the functionality, the cognitive performance, and also it will be important to have a caregiver, not only to give information about the functionality of the patient, but also to help in case that there are adverse events. And for us, for the complementary test, we will need to have a baseline brain MRI and also biomarkers results to be sure that this patient has a biological process of Alzheimer's disease. And maybe it will be important to also know the APOE genotype because that will be uh, informative in the case that we face a possible adverse events. And what are the implications of Alzheimer's disease patient stratification? Well, first, we will need to screen uh, a wider population in order to select the right patients because not all the patients will be eligible for this type of treatments. And we will need to educate the patients and their carers about the process, the diagnostic process, how we conduct that, and also inform them the patient and the families about the results very carefully. For example, the APOE genotype could have implications also in the family. We have seen that we, when we explain the patient that is an homozygous, for example, our case for the APOE genotype, APOE4, then the family start questioning, well, do I have the same risk or not? So these are the type of questions that we're going to face in this case, and these are some of the implications that could have from the family, and we have to have this conversation and educate the patient and the families. So in conclusion, patient stratification can increase diagnostic efficacy and improve prognosis accuracy in patients with Alzheimer's disease. <laughs>